The foundation under your feet right now is performing chemistry you can't see. That sidewalk, the building you're in, the bridge you crossed, they're made from material that's still reacting, still hardening, still getting stronger 50 years after it was poured. Not cured, not finished, still transforming. Here's what nobody tells you. Concrete is liquid rock that never stops becoming solid. Not baked like pottery, not melted like metal, but chemically transformed through reaction so complex that scientists still discover new behaviors. Every cubic meter contains trillions of microscopic crystals growing, interlocking, creating strength from pure chemistry. Why does Roman concrete from 2,000 years ago survive in seawater while modern concrete crumbles in decades? How did one accidental discovery create the material holding up civilization? And what makes the difference between concrete that fails in 20 years and concrete designed to last millennia? Let's explore the process. Concrete begins with limestone, specifically calcium carbonate, ancient seashells and coral compressed into rock over millions of years. But limestone alone isn't cement, it's inert stone, won't react with anything. For thousands of years, humans stacked stone, made mud bricks, built with wood. We had no binding material strong enough for lasting monolithic structures. Then Romans discovered something remarkable. Mix volcanic ash with lime, and it creates paste that hardens underwater. The Pantheon Dome, 18 centuries old, proves they understood chemistry. But the knowledge was lost. For a thousand years, we couldn't reproduce it. Then, in 1824, British bricklayer Joseph Aspden tried heating limestone and clay together. He ground the result into powder, mixed it with water, and something impossible happened. It hardened into artificial stone. But here's where it gets interesting. Aspden had rediscovered that heating limestone to 1,450 degrees breaks calcium carbonate into calcium oxide. Add clay for silicon and aluminum. Heat forces these into new compounds that don't exist naturally. Add water and they react violently, growing crystals that interlock into rock. This material, Portland cement, became the foundation of every modern city. Here's what happens when you pour concrete, and why cheap foundations crack within years, while engineered structures last centuries. Concrete starts with mixing cement powder, sand, gravel, and water. Ratios determine everything. Too much water weakens it. Too little, and it won't flow. Precision measured to the gram. You probably think concrete hardens by drying. Everyone does. But it's hydration. Water doesn't evaporate. It reacts with cement, forming new crystalline structures. Calcium silicate crystals grow like microscopic needles, interlocking in three dimensions. That's why cheap patios crack. Wrong water ratio. Contractors add extra water to make it flow easier, diluting chemistry. You paid for it when cracks appeared after winter. The concrete gets poured into forms. As water touches cement, reaction begins. Heat releases. You can feel concrete warming. Crystals start growing within minutes. The paste thickens, stiffens, then hardens. But wait! Curing determines everything. Concrete hardens by reacting, not drying. Keep it wet, and reaction continues. Let it dry too fast, and reaction stops, leaving weak concrete. Contractors spray water for days, feeding the reaction. This is why concrete gets stronger over time. Hydration continues for decades. Year 1 – decent strength. Year 50 – significantly stronger. Crystals keep growing as long as unreacted cement remains. Some concrete needs additives. 
Plasticizers make it flow without extra water. Accelerators speed reaction for cold weather. Air entrainment creates bubbles, preventing freeze damage. Each changes crystal growth at molecular level. The final concrete isn't dried paste. It's engineered composite. Sand and gravel provide bulk. Cement paste binds everything. The interface is where chemistry creates unbreakable bonds. Roman concrete survives 2,000 years in seawater. Modern concrete crumbles in 50. That reversal reveals something profound. Romans used volcanic ash containing aluminum silicates. In seawater, these react continuously, growing crystals that fill cracks. The concrete heals itself. Modern concrete uses pure Portland cement. Faster setting, higher strength, lower cost. But in seawater, it degrades. We optimized for speed, sacrificed longevity. But here's the kicker. Scientists have recreated Roman concrete. We can make concrete lasting millennia, healing its cracks, getting stronger in harsh environments. We choose not to because it sets slower and costs more. Concrete dominates because it's the strongest structural material we can make from local materials anywhere. Sand, gravel, limestone exist everywhere. That universality built civilization. Every time you walk on a sidewalk or trust a building, you're standing on ongoing chemistry. You're trusting control of crystal growth at molecular level. That foundation isn't finished. It's still reacting, still growing crystals, still becoming stronger, or cracking because someone chose economics over chemistry. So, that liquid rock still transforming beneath everything you know. Concrete isn't about construction anymore. It's about recognizing eternal chemistry. Crystals still growing. Reactions still happening. Molecular bonds forming while you stand there. Every structure is either still becoming stronger or already failing. There is no stable state. Maybe you'll see the chemistry happening under your feet because you're someone who understands that everything solid is still in motion. From steel's atomic rearrangement to glass's frozen chaos, from aluminum's electrical liberation to plastic's molecular design, from paper's hydrogen bonds to concrete's eternal crystallization, you've learned to see the invisible forces holding your world together. You see the transformation now, not just the surface. You understand the engineering others walk over. You're someone who reads the chemistry the world is built on. That's the process. Until next time, trust the process.